Students are going to start making choices about their courses for high school and even eighth grade very early on in middle school and upper elementary school. They start thinking about those courses. So we need, if they are going to have an interest in pursuing a STEM career, they need to start making choices that early so that they can choose the courses that will lead them to those careers. Uh, a lot of kids, even younger than middle school age, start out being interested in dinosaurs, uh, which was the case for me and I think for lots of people. And as you get into middle school and you start to kind of, at, at least at, a, at an early age, begin to understand the range of things that are possible out there, it just gives you a lot of opportunities to see those things, to see what it's really like, uh, get a better feel for whether it's something you really might want to do. Uh, so you know, getting an early start, you know, I think that's always a good thing. So I think it's really important for um, middle school students and high school students to learn about careers like pharmacy and being a pharmacist early on so that they can recognize and realize that the classes that they're taking even as early as middle school and high school can actually help lay the foundation for them to have a career in the future that can have a huge impact on people's lives um, and really change the world. So the whole idea is that we want students to have more accurate information about what careers in STEM are like, so that students who actually have an aptitude towards STEM or mathematics, any of these careers, if they have an aptitude or an interest in these careers, they know that, they can learn that early on and start taking steps to prepare themselves for those careers. We use terms in school like scientist and mathematician but that doesn't really define it for students so that they know what they're getting into. If we show them these careers early on, they can start making more accurate, um, more accurate decisions about whether or not they're interested in pursuing those careers. The best part about being a pharmacist is just that I get to participate as part of the patient care team to help sick people feel better. So I, it's my responsibility to teach them how to use their medications safely and effectively. Um, and so one of the most rewarding things is seeing people who are sick come back, um, whether it's days, weeks, months later, and just see how much better they're feeling once they're using their medications and using them correctly. The most challenging part about being a pharmacist, um, I think is just that pharmacy is changing all the time and there are always new medications that are coming to the market. And so it sometimes can be difficult to stay on top of all of the new medications or the new uses um, or the new side effects that we're learning about them. But it's a good challenge because it means that I'm always continuing to learn every day. So in order to become a pharmacist, you have to graduate from high school and then there are a couple of years of what are called prerequisite college classes that you have to take. And then you take a big exam um, that's called the PCAT and based on uh, how you do in your college classes and how you score on the PCAT, you can apply and get admitted to a pharmacy program. Uh, the pharmacy program is a four-year program at most schools, and at the end you have a Doctor of Pharmacy degree. So a lot of pharmacy is based on sciences like biology and chemistry. So if we think about pharmacy, it's all centered around the safe use of medications by people. And so if we think about the human body, a lot of how the human body works is biology or um, anatomy and physiology. And then medications are chemicals, drugs that we put into our bodies. And so understanding the interaction between the human body and the chemicals is a very important piece of pharmacy. So um, a good solid foundation in biology and chemistry is really important and really helpful. And then the other part of pharmacy is really just interacting with people, um, whether it's patients or doctors, nurses, other people that are part of the healthcare team. And so good communication skills are also a really important foundation to the practice. So I think pharmacy is a really important profession. None of us are getting any younger. 
And as people age, they tend to have more health problems and require more medications um, to keep their bodies functioning at full capacity. And so I think that pharmacists offer the world a, really a, a lot of knowledge and a lot of information about medications and how to use them safely. Archaeology is a, essentially a social science, so that even if you, if you discover that you're interested in it, uh, I don't know about a lot of people, but I knew pretty well that I was headed this way since about ninth grade. Archaeology is great fun, and I think a lot of people, uh, a lot of kids, even younger than middle school age, start out being interested in dinosaurs, uh, which is the case for me, and you know, I think for lots of people. And as you get into middle school and you start to kind of at least at, a, at an early age, begin to understand the range of things that are possible out there. Uh, if you kind of go from dinosaurs into other fields, and archaeology could be one of them. Uh, but if you're headed that way, uh, I know I, I just read a ton of stuff as I was getting into middle school and on, uh, as far as even history and geology and, you know, lots of things that, that really kind of set me up for where I was going with that. But if you have an interest that way, uh, then you've got the opportunity to look into that subject. You know, maybe you tell your parents you want to go to Michelinacra and have a look at that. Uh, maybe you want to go to other kinds of sites around the country that are historic sites that, that have an archaeological component to it. Uh, you know, it just gives you a lot of opportunities to see those things, to see what it's really like, uh, get a better feel for whether it's something you really might want to do. Uh, so, and, you know, getting an early start, nah, I think that's always a good thing. Science and math classes are important things to do, uh, getting into archaeology. By the time you get to college, then most archaeologists in, in the U.S. Uh, major in anthropology. Anthropology is a field that's made up of several, several subfields, and archaeology is one of those. Professional archaeologists who are in the field, whether they're working for a museum or whether they're working for the government or whoever it may be, consultants, uh, lots of people these days have master's degrees. And then if you really want to get into academia, if you want to, you want to teach at a university uh, and other kinds of jobs as well, uh, a PhD is something that opens a lot of doors for you and there are certainly plenty of archaeologists who, who go to that level. There are people who are underwater archaeologists and they become, they learn to scuba dive and work their way into underwater archaeology because that's what they're interested in. It's a really good thing to look for volunteer opportunities, get the experience demonstrates that you're really interested and serious about this and that's one of the best ways to kind of really get things going is to get into a lab or get into a, even a field work situation as a volunteer. We spend time out in the field whether we're looking for archaeological sites, testing archaeological sites, excavating archaeological sites. Uh, field work is something that all archaeologists really enjoy. It gives you the opportunity to both uh, be out in the field uh, during the warm weather. And then the other side of that is when you get into the fall and the winter season, you're back in the lab, you're working with all the artifacts you dug up. That cycle of being out in the field in the warm weather, being back in the lab in the, in the cool weather is something I think everybody really likes. And I would say the other thing is, uh, Everybody likes archaeology. You hardly ever meet somebody who's lukewarm or not interested in archaeology. There's an interesting uh, quality of life situation with archaeology because archaeology contributes to all kinds of opportunities for people that are learning experiences, even tourism experiences, that sort of thing. And it's contributing not only to the reconstruction of that site, but to the interpretation there, all the educational programs. You know, in a related way then, you know, archaeology actually does contribute to the economy of those places. Uh, Mackinac City draws in tourists and the people are there spending money in hotels, spending money in restaurants, and while uh, it may be a little bit of a stretch down the road to connect archaeology to that, it still is the case. One of the things about archaeology is that it's, it's different from history. Uh, history is an interesting subject. History is cool, no doubt about it. But with history, you're looking at manuscripts and you're in archives and you're in libraries. But with archaeology, you have the, the hard evidence that you're especially interested in, which is to say the artifacts. 
uh, the animal bones. That kind of stuff is just uh, terrific fun as far as I'm concerned.